Hey everyone and welcome back to Soul Reaver. Today we're going to start things off a little bit differently where we're going to go ahead and pick up that health piece we left down here because I wasn't paying attention last video. And you may notice we have someone else with us today. I'm the Akari Warrior, we're back again after, uh, after missing out on the last vid. Yep. And I missed you. Yeah. It was very lonely. I was talking to myself in my room. Uh, it's well, a sad sight. I missed you too. And I missed you too, Raziel. Anyway, there's a quick cut. I just wanted to show that we got the health piece. Wanted to make sure we got it before we hit it Zephon, because I almost die. <laughs> yeah, and that's with after getting all the pie pieces. True. Um, so here's another thing I wanted to show real quick. The humans can be siphoned from to get a little bit of their soul that will allow you to get health, kind of like how Cain got health off dudes chained to walls in the previous games. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very useful thing to have those people around because there are a couple people who help you out inside and you're going to need it. So here yeah. we can see here we can see the, uh, the door being opened by the Soul Reaver using the Soul Reaver as a key. And uh, that actually becomes a, uh, a core element of the later games. Yeah, there's a lot of elemental puzzles with this, and like Defiance, where you have to make a door on fire, or at least the urns around it, things like that. But using the Reaver as a key is going to become really important later. In this game, it's mostly just what we saw, shoving it in a hole. But, uh, oh, by the way, these guys, we'll announce these guys later. I'm not fighting them in this hallway. But yeah, in this game, the key thing really just mostly sucks, because you have to have full health to open the door. And if you don't, you've got to shift around and get it back to normal. Although, so far as I remember, that's the only key that we have. There's more. Yeah, there's one in Rah uh, Rahab's level, and there's quite a few that are involving secrets, which you may have missed, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a while since I played this one. Yeah, true enough. So I really like this area. It's got a nice little village feel to it, kind of abandoned. You can hear the wind whispering, or wind wisping whistling. through. Whist I don't even know. Whistling, howling. Whatever. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> but I like it, regardless. There's lots of cliffs, stuff to climb. You can do this in the uh, spectral realm. I think it might even be easier. I don't, for some reason. Yeah, I remember when I was first playing through this it took me like I, it was a straight three hour run through because I didn't see that that uh, that exit over by the cliff so yeah it just took me uh, a good long while yeah this whole area like takes a long time it's actually longer than probably most of the other sections in the game this is a one hour vid which is pretty damn good and uh, even then that's forever. So this little dude making his nice little cocoon is one of the Zeph on him. They are wall climbing fucktards. Basically they have the same abilities as most vampires. They have soul replacement, they have lunge attacks, they climb on walls, and they jump out at you and they kick your ass because they're assholes from hell. And they somehow manage to uh they somehow manage to land more more square hits on you than anyone else. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're, <laughs> they're fast, squirrely little bastards. I hate them. Yeah, to be honest, this is the worst enemy in the game, and I'm glad they're only in one spot. Yeah, seriously. By the way, I applaud your attempt to snipe that guy. Yeah, that it didn't work at all. Apparently there's more uh, gravity involved than I expected. No, I think you just were... You're. I seriously think you were off by just a hair. I've done. I've had instances where I've uh, managed to nail that guy from uh, before, like before the even cutscene even shows up. Really? You oh. killed him in the cutscene? No, I killed him before the cutscene, and then it just, <laughs> it just shows the cocoon there. That's amazing. I wish I'd done that now. Ah, oh, I missed out. <laughs> anyway, you can see I get lost there. This area is incredibly dark. It's very easy to get lost. Once a testament to mankind's defiance of Cain's empire, this towering cathedral now stood derelict. The humans who worshipped here, dead for centuries. 
Its architects conceived this tower as a holy weapon against the vampire menace, a colossal instrument of brass and stone. The cathedral's pipes, once tuned to blast a deadly hymn, now stood silent, and these vacant spaces whistled their impotence. Yeah, I, I actually love the concept of this. Oh, by the way, down here, don't go down there. Not for a long time. Anyway, I actually love the concept of this place. Like, it's a giant, massive super weapon that used to shoot out blasts of sound that just kicked vampires' asses all over. Very cool. I thought it was also really awesome the way the pipes slid along like that. Yeah, I, it's one of the best, or at least the most stark examples of the difference between the spectral realm and the normal realm. And in this area, you literally, if you don't know that that's there, you will end up falling down that pipe and getting lost in circles because it's very tricky. Also, you can fall off this pipe really easy, which is why I'm walking. Yeah, which is which I've done. I've I've fallen off and all that wonderful stuff many times. Thankfully, it's still pretty close to the, the ground here. You don't have to worry about it too much. Falling off this stuff kind of sucks, though. Oh yeah, but the um, one thing that I that I'd like to point out is the difference in the uh, the music. The spectral realm, you can kind of hear the uh, you can kind of hear the organ, which I think kind of which I think adds a lot to the experience. You can really get a feel for our, how how spiritual this place used to be. Yeah, I love that you can also hear the notes if you listen to it while you're in the material realm. Real quick, you'll hear this doo -doo -doo. like you can hear it going. Exactly. It's just very quiet and subdued. And then once you go into the spectral realm, it amplifies into this crazy madness. I almost prefer to be in the special realm in this in this level because the music is just so great. Oh yeah, I actually love Soul Reaver's music, and it's one of the cool things is since it's all very ambient, there's no real themes in this game. Later on, it will become very theme oriented, but since Soul Reaver is so ambient, it actually makes it actually makes my video editing really easy. Yeah, it kind of helps you concentrate. I could do my homework to this music. Oh, really? Well, back when I had <laughs> homework in 1997. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> By the way, you'll see right here, I get hit like three times, and I decide, basically, fuck this, I'm not fighting three vampires with no health. So, the best thing to do when this happens is just go right back to the spectral realm. And they do that a lot. More than more than once in this area, we're going to have uh, we're going to materialize into the plane, and then there'll just be a vampire right on top of us. Oh yeah, that's a great segment. I'm not gonna tell you when that happens, but that is one of my favorite moments in this game. Yeah, I won't. Go check this out, our viewers. Do some Michael Jackson right there. Kick some ass. Love it. I think I get all these guys with a Soul Reaver, which is pretty impressive. Simply due to the fact that they're just awful enemies. Yeah, well, it helps that the, uh, the first glyph that you got enabled you to, um, the first glyph that you got enabled you to, uh, score a free hit on all three of them. Yeah, it acts as a free hit. Some of them it'll actually straight up hurt, and it also does a pushback. So here's the basic concept of this area. As you can see, there's blocks right next to everything that you need to put it in. And you've got to finish the painting on the wall. This is going to happen a lot. And this is not even the worst one. Yeah, this is the easiest one. And I would like to thank you, Leading Man, for including me on this while we go on this epic journey together. Yeah, I, well, I figured you might have some inspirational talk about boxes that we could fill this time with. Well, this game includes a lot of three-dimensional thinking, you see. So you want to make sure that you uh, are able to rotate and drag the box appropriately. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just decided to let you keep talking there. It's pretty <laughs> sweet. I was, I was actually waiting to see where that was going to go. That's about, <laughs> that's about all I got. 